Hello, everybody. How are you doing today? Excited? Happy? All right, at least one person. So welcome. I'm Wayne Vota. I work for FHI 360, and I have the coolest job in international development. In fact, I believe I have the coolest job in the world. I get to think about interesting and new technologies and how we can use them to improve people's lives in the developing world. Technologies like drones, and also technologies like sensors. Wearables. How many people here have a wearable on their arm, an activity tracker? Come on, raise your hands if you have an activity tracker. How many people have some other kind of sensor on their person? Anybody? Anybody? Actually, every single one of you do. Every single one of you have a mobile phone in your pocket, or in your purse, or in your hand right now. And that mobile phone has at least 14 sensors at last count. 14 different sensors to test all kinds of things that are happening in your environment. Which ones do we use most often? Well, we think about the visual sensor, the camera sensor on the phone. And I love this. This is Miramar. In Miramar, you don't fill out a form to buy a, a SIM card. You actually have the, uh, the person take the photograph of your passport and send it in. No paper. Some of us actually buy phones just because they have an amazing camera. And other times, we can think of this phone as actually something you talk to. Like people actually talk to their phone and make phone calls with it. I know, crazy people. But this is an auditory sensor. And if we work with it, we can also think about this amazing fingerprint sensor, which actually is one of my favorite. Again, raise your hand if you know a government has your fingerprint. Come on, raise your hand if you know a government has your fingerprint. Now keep your hand up if you're happy that that government has your fingerprint. Right. Now, how many of you have an iPhone 6 and have given willingly several fingerprints to a random California corporation? Uh-huh, uh-huh. And you do that and you don't care. Hmm. Anyway, so there are more other sensors that we can work with. Again, 14 at last count. Every single one of these sensors does something different and can track a different aspect of your environment. Yesterday, I went running here in Helsinki. And as you can see, I took out my phone and I was able to track my speed, my altitude, and my location all by the sensors that are on the phone. I didn't have to add anything. They're already in there using an off-the-shelf program. I mean, this is amazing that phones can do this now. And if everybody in the room, all of our phones vibrated at the exact same time in the exact same way, either we're at the slush after party or there's an earthquake. And so scientists can use this concept of all the phones vibrating to understand when there's an earthquake, its, its intensity, and how to warn others about it. We can also use sensors on the phone to look in the eyes and do glaucoma or cataract understanding. This has been going on in India for six, seven years now. We can use that same camera sensor to look at a throat and look for throat cancer or any skin lesion that's on the body. We can use the, the auditory that a sound sensor to pl plug in for ultrasound and look inside the body and understand what's going on. We can um, advance the slide too fast and think about the sensors that if we take blood samples or water samples, we can look inside the blood or the water and understand what's happening. Is there a glucose level high? Is there sugar level low? Is there pollutants in the water? And this, interesting enough, is plugged back into that auditory sensor on the phone. So if you think about the health concept, any test that you go to for your doctor today, you can actually have that data captured on the phone and transmitted to a health practitioner in real time. And this isn't happening just here in Finland. It's happening around the world. And specifically, what I care about, it's actually happening in poor countries in the developing world. They are advancing as fast as we are with some of this technology, if not faster. And you might think it costs billions or trillions of dollars to give out phones to all these people in East Africa or East Asia or around the world. Aha. Interestingly enough, people in Africa actually have feature phones that can do some of these tools. And they are faster and faster adopting smartphones to the point that there are over 50 million people on Facebook today using their smartphones or their feature phones on the continent. And there are other countries in other parts of the world that are even leapfrogging. This is Miramar. If you notice, they're actually leapfrogging the feature phone and going right to smartphones. Last year, Miramar had about 2 million people with mobile, phone, mobile phones. This year, it's 25 million. 
50% of the country, of those 50% of the population, 80% are using smartphones. They are leapfrogging right past feature phones into smartphones. So all these sensors in the phone, they're amazing. There's so many of them. They're getting cheaper every day thanks to Apple and Samsung fighting out these battles, making our phones faster and better with longer battery life. Please, dear God. So in this concept, we can take the phone apart. We can take out these individual sensors and we can do amazing things with them. So let's go back to that activity tracker, that accelerometer that's in there. If we think of the activity tracker, yes, it tracks activity. It also tracks your sleep cycle. So we can see how different people are sleeping in different places. We can also see when they're not sleeping, when in fact they're woken up by, in this case, an earthquake in Napa Valley. And if you're working in development and you're thinking about how could you use a phone, here we can tell that people in Napa Valley woke up earlier, stayed awake longer, and therefore were probably more physically and mentally affected by the earthquake than any other group, so you know where to place your, your services for them. And activity trackers are getting cheaper all the time. The model that I'm wearing is 50 bucks. Uh, they'll probably be $40 this Christmas. By next year, they'll be $20. Affordable for every single person in the developing world to buy one if they need one for medical activity. And these sensors are just getting in more and more things. They're going to be in pretty much everything soon. Everything with electrode, they're going to have a sensor in it of some sort. Even a Band-Aid. USAID is investing in a Band-Aid that has an electromagnetic sensor in it so we can see how fast the wound is healing. Amazing. Sensors and Band-Aids. And now if you think about other aspects, we can put sensors and look at the amount of nitrogen in a leaf. Why does that matter? Because nitrogen is used to grow food, and food security is a huge issue around the world. India and China are the greatest consumers of nitrogen uh, fertilizer. They're also the greatest polluters of nitrogen fertilizer. So by using a sensor, we can understand how much fertilizer they should use and make sure it's more accurate so they have a greater outcome of their crops with less waste and less pollution. At the same time, it's easy to know the weather in Finland. During slush, it's slush. But if you think about Africa, we don't know oftentimes where the weather is in a lot of places. So now we can put sensors across the continent to understand is it raining on this side of the mountain or that side of the mountain and adjust accordingly. And now let's think about eating food. Often in India, Africa, and around the world, food is consumed through an open fire process like this. It's highly pollutive. They say it kills more, indoor air pollution kills more people than anything else, more than AIDS and all that. So how do we get people to improve the way they cook their food? We give them cook stoves. And when we give them cook stoves, high efficiency cook stoves, and we ask them, do you use the cook stove? And they say, of course. Just like if I asked you, do you exercise more and drink less? Of course you're going to say, uh-huh. But is that aspiration or is that actual? If we put a cheap $5 sensor on a cook stove, we find out there's a slight difference between what people say and they actually do. Just like this activity tracker tells me that I don't run as much as I think I want to do, right? So in that concept, we have other platforms we could sensors on. Drones, my favorite, flying sensor platforms. Oh my god. But the same token, with this, we can start with the visual. We can look at mapping after a disaster and understand what the communities are doing. We can also have people hack the drones and add infrared sensors to look at crops and how plants are growing or what the effect of a disaster is on crops. We can also look at air pollution, and the sensors can test to see if the government is holding the corporations accountable for the pollution they may be producing. And my favorite, water drones. So drones can go in the water, swim down, get tests, and take readings all throughout the water layers in rivers and lakes and in oceans. Smart cars, really cool, a really big sensor platform. And of course, smart cars may come to the US and Finland soon, probably not to Africa, because there they ride the bus. But the pretty cool thing about it is we can put sensors on the bus. So remember the accelerometer that shakes if, you're, if everybody's in an earthquake together? Well, if the bus shakes every time at that same spot as it passes over, then that means there's a pothole or there's an infrastructure issue we can fix. And I know that you all like to use Waze and other traffic apps. Well, what about putting that same kind of technology on the bus to understand where the issues are in traffic and a route around them? In fact, they've done this in Cote d'Ivoire, and they've actually found new ways to move people around the capital city that are more efficient. And that's Cote d'Ivoire, a country in West Africa. 
So in this concept, these are the ideas that I've thought of. I'm sure you can think of other great ideas. But I want us to take a moment and remind us who thinks of the best ideas, who's the most knowledgeable. And often, that is the communities that we want to help. They're living there. They know the issues, they know what they have, and they know what the solutions can be. They also know the true timelines and how long it takes to get things done and who to talk to to make that happen. And my favorite, they're producing this technology themselves. This is Varone. He runs a company in Congo, Brazzaville uh, in West Africa. He produces mobile phones. He produces tablets. He is the Steve Jobs of West Africa, and he is selling across the continent at world-class quality and world-class prices. In Haiti, we have the same concept with Surtab. They're building tablets there that can beat anything else in the market, right? And these are the countries that we often associate with poverty or with uh, poor infrastructure. They're producing these technologies themselves. And then what I'm really happy about working in development is large development actors are actually investing in sensors. USAID is investing in sensors as a way to track wildlife. More to the point, how to reduce wildlife crime, how to reduce poaching. There's also an effort to try to track books, to make sure books go from the publisher to the actual schools that we want them to be in. And in um, Amazonia, we have indigenous leaders who are testing the water quality to make sure that companies that are mining our, our oil extraction are actually agreeing to and maintaining the, the quality assurance that they promised the government and the community. So they're holding the government and these corporations accountable from the Amazon basin. So I want to leave with this key point here, this key point that we should respect people in the developing world as having their own ideas, of having the technology to do a lot of this, and should be the leaders in what we do. Because as you can see, Africans know what they're doing. And they know the, the selfie, they're already there with us, and my favorite, they know the photo bomb as well. So in this sense, let's not um, develop for, let's develop with. As they are equal, we are all equal in our development aspects. Hi, I'm Wayne Vota, and that's why I have the coolest job in international development. Thank you.